Hello viewers, today we're going to be setting up a testing rig here. I'm going to hang, I don't even know where it is anymore. I'm going to hang that Enviro fan as soon as I find it. And I want to test it with, I guess I would test it with this control and this control. I'm kind of curious to see how it would handle with that remote that's currently up here. But it's kind of irrelevant because I can't close the canopy with that remote. So I I wouldn't use it that way anyways. So the first thing we have to do is take this fan down. I'm not going to completely disassemble everything because I'm not really done using this down here. But it has to, um, I have to get everything off of that box so that I can utilize the box. So what I'll do for this is I'll just take this off. I'm going to leave it connected to the fan because when I put the fan back, I'm going to need it still. I'm just going to put this up out of the way for now. It doesn't really go back on there and it really needs to. So let me get a smaller one. Try that. We'll need to. Two hundred watt incandescent light bulb. Perfect. That's holding it pretty strong. So we'll do that and then uh, set this down in here. See if it'll grab onto that one. Oddly enough, that one connects just fine. So now I'll take this and stick this back up into there. And we'll just be using this box as a mount point for this test, or these tests. Uh, and the wiring will just kind of be there, but not being used to connect the fan. Okay. I only needed one of those. Okay, so now that can just be on and it's irrelevant. Okay, so the fan, uh, let's see, it'll come down like this. Am I gonna have to take the blades off? No, I'll be okay. These irons are pretty tough. I'm not worried about them getting bent. Maybe I should be worried about them getting bent. Holy mackerel. Okay. Turn on these stupid flickering piece of junk lights for a moment. Um, I gotta get a cloth to put this on. I'll just set it here for the moment. Gosh, I can't take these lights. How do you live like this? How do people use these stupid things? Look at that. 
You'd have to be psychotic to be able to stand under these lights for any period of time. Okay. Turn those pieces of garbage off. Okay, so now we have the uh, bracket there. I think I saw it. Yep, it's over here. The fan is over here. Nah, it's been to fall over, but that wouldn't be a big loss. That was free anyways. This thing's heavy for a small fan. I guess it's cast iron. I think it's safe to say that these really were the last, like, really good sewing fans we have. You know, we're, we're, this is made in 2019, which is not long ago. And um, it's still good quality. So that's really saying something. All right, just too much stuff on the table here. I gotta clean up in here. I shouldn't live like this. Too much stuff floating around. I'm going to start with this because if it's if it doesn't hum obnoxiously this is what I like to use so let's get the fan out here I'm so glad it came with this because I was gonna to have to buy a second one because if I put two Jayhawk fans upstairs I would need a second one. Okay, just to save me a little bit of grief, I'm going to go ahead and put the blades on with it on the table. I don't typically do that, but I think um, because it's such a small fan, I think I can get away with doing that. I charge this up so this should be good to go. There we go, nice and powerful. Well, not really, but. A long screw. And I'm sure somebody will go ahead and tell me it's wrong to put the blades on first. I don't entirely disagree, but. You know, it's just, it's, it's fine for this case. I'm really happy with the quality on this. Look at they even put a washer after the lock nut. And if you don't do that, when you tighten this, it would scratch all the paint off. And so they've completely prevented that by putting that second washer there. Probably cost a couple extra cents to put the washer there, but they did it anyways. Some metal shavings there or something. Shouldn't live like this either. This is a freak show. I gotta clean up down here. Oh, 
The screws thread very nicely. It's quite unusual to work with something that's good quality that was made recently. Very odd. <laughs> Okay, so the blades is on, and I'm not going to mess with this thing. I just don't have a need to right now, so I'll just take this and kind of wrap this up down here. Safety third. Not worried about the J-hook falling. We're at such a low ceiling down here anyways that if the J-hook broke and this tried to catch it, it wouldn't really make any difference anyways. It would already be in a danger zone by the time that stopped it. Okay, so let's go ahead and hook this up there now. That is so cool. I'm going to turn this off. It probably is wreaking havoc on the video. Very neat. Okay, so now we got to set up the testing situation. So we have these leads, which are surprisingly long, considering the length of the down rod is, is not that long. I think this is several times the length of the down rod. Which is okay, I'd rather have more wire than not enough, but it seems kind of excessive. Nice long leads, they're probably uh, two or three times the length of the down rod. All right, so now, um, gee, does this not go down any lower? I guess not. Huh. Okay, so we have any holes in the ceiling? That's like one started right there. I don't know if I could punch that all the way through. Okay, so the closest hole, I guess, would be that one over there. Okay, so let's see what we need here. We're going to need a, uh, a cord to plug in. And uh, Shoot, I forgot how to wire this thing up. I think, uh... I want to say it's it's high side... Fian. That wouldn't make sense. Is this ground? I think it's high side and then to the Fian. And this is just ground. That would make sense. High side fan, or I guess would it would it? It wouldn't be. Um, I don't think it would be 
polarity sensitive. Well, I'm I'm fairly confident that that's how it's going to be. It's going to go from the high side to the fan, and this is just ground. Anyways, if it's wrong, then something explodes. Whatever. Uh, we use this cord here. I'm sure all these other little cords are going to come flying down with it because that's just how things function. Oh, we're not doing too bad. Oh, cool. Okay, so that's that. And then up to the fan, I'll use this cord I was supposed to throw out, which is still perfectly good. Because I like to use stuff like that. Just to confirm, because I know this fan was expensive. I don't want nothing blowing up. Let me grab the testing meter out and here we got this... This keyboard is such a piece of junk that letters are just falling off. Ugh. Absolute garbage. That's one of the worst keyboards I've ever typed on. And I've seen quite a few bad keyboards. Okay, let's just check this with the meter to make sure that my theory is correct. I have not used a switch like this in years. Okay, so I think if we go like this, Nothing seems to be changing. I'm pretty sure that's the way it's supposed to go, but I better... I better confirm, because I don't want nothing breaking. I was correct. It, it goes through here I just I was confused I guess because it's usually black and white and this one's both red which is weird plus it's late at night and I just don't function right after working all day and it's late and whatever I don't usually do anything of, <laughs> of critical importance at night for that very reason anyways um, let's put this back together and proceed and hopefully I don't forget anything else and screw anything up I don't even think uh, resistance is the correct way to check one of those things. I'm not actually sure what the the uh, theory behind these controls is. I guess I should learn. There's that piece of junk keyboard again. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get this out here. I don't know why this was supposed to be thrown out. This is a perfectly good cord. It's a nice length, too. It's only a two-wire, so this is... It's not grounded, so I wouldn't really use this permanently, but for a test, it's fine. Uh, let's see here. Oh, here we go again with these wire strippers. Let's see how it works this time. Probably going to have to use a knife. I don't think this is going to work, but that's not a fault of the tool. Eh, cut through ever so slightly. I think we're just going to go with it because it's just for a test. Alright, so I guess we'll make the, whatever color that is, the high side. And the white will be the low side. Good. 
goof. Okay, so we'll take this cord and I'll fish it through. I'll fish it through here just so we know it's not going to get in the way of the blades. And so we'll take the common and put that to the common. And the black to the blue or red or purple or whatever the heck this color is. I don't know and I don't care. should be black that's the standard I don't know why they're changing it or just not adhering to it and then these other wires are just irrelevant for this particular scenario we're not going to ground it because whatever and we're not going to uh, connect the reverse because that would be pointless in this case so I guess those should probably be capped off just for whatever reason. And uh, I think those can just loop over here like this. That's fine. Okay, so that'll be our testing setup. How this got into a knot is beyond me. This would be the proper way to do a stripping of a wire like this. And if you know what you're doing, you can do it just enough to go cut through the shielding, but not through the shielding on a wire. All right, so in this case, what we're gonna do here is we would take the high side and the high side would go onto the control. Not sure if it matters which side, probably not because it's not labeled. What a piece of junk. Worthless. And the other side will go on to the high of the AC input. Also useless. And then the um, two commons will go together. And it looks like the grounding was cut off for whatever reason. I don't know why. I'll try to put it on 
Just because I'll be holding this control, it should be grounded. Okay, so that I believe is the correct. So let's go ahead and plug this in and see what transpires. Hopefully nothing eventful. Whoops. Start with it on. Okay. Watts. Point six watts. It's humming, but it's not unbearable. The low trim obviously is way off on this thing. Oh, that's pretty unbearable. All right, so that's functionally, that's probably a good low speed right there. But it's too noisy. Oh, but that's ridiculous to have it that loud. Especially because it just gets louder as you go up. I hate to say it, but the performance is really unimpressive. It's if even at this speed, it's still a very gentle breeze. And it's loud. That, of course, is probably just because of the control. Because if you was to shut it off, Wouldn't be all that loud. All right, this is full speed now, or we're getting to full speed anyways. Jeez, that's really like underwhelming. Jeez, here I am thinking this is going to be overkill for the, for the rum, and it's like, hardly even going to cool the rum. <laughs> it's still super cool, but disappointing in, in terms of performance. I would almost always run it on high. You could feel a good amount of air moving underneath it, but like, it's just, it's unimpressive. It's extremely unimpressive. Which is a shame because I don't think the old ones were like that. I think the old ones were pretty strong. Yeah, it's, it's just very tame. Very tame. 
All right, well this control stinks, so we're not gonna use that one. It's only pulling 36 watts. I mean, yeah, 36 watts, 0.3 amps with a power factor of 97 one hundredths. Okay. Well, we're totally not gonna use that control. That solves that pretty easily uh, because that's way too loud. So that leads me to my next control, which would be this one, this four speed control. I, I it kind of expected this to be the case. I'm disappointed, but I'm not at all surprised. All right, so let's get that out of the picture. Let's get this opened up. Where have these scissors been all my life? These scissors are absolutely amazing. hope they never break they probably never will these things are solid scissors made in the USA of course probably has a lot to do with why they still work turns any three-speed fan into a four-speed fan. Well, that's not really true. It doesn't change the fan. It just gives it an extra speed based off of the control. The fan is still a three-speed fan, even if this makes it have four speeds. All right, let's hook this up and see. I'd like it to have a really nice aesthetic low, but the reality is it hardly moves any air even <laughs> running at full speed. So the usefulness of that, of course, is going to be diminished. So this has a wire diagram. And it shows the fan going um, AC into here and then up to the fan. So this fan will go into here. If you really wanted to get a nice quiet low, you're going to have to make the make the control custom. You know, buy a bunch of capacitors and play with the values and find out the one that really gives you the speed you want. Because these these cookie cutter controls, they're just not really meant for that. Because this is a four speed, the low may be a little bit slower than a three speed one, but it's still not going to. I know it's not going to be exactly what I want. Okay. So I believe number four is the slowest speed. Holy cow. This control is worse than the other one. For heaven's sakes. I don't know why it's so noisy. Unless that's something that the... Is that a function of the mounting? I don't know. What is the deal with that? Something is like loose or whatever. I don't know. <sighs> what is with all that noise?
It just seems very loud, like... Oh. Huh. Well, in that case, then I'm going to use the other stinking control. That's outrageous. All right, so this is one uh, or four, which four being the highest number should be the highest speed, but mm, made in China, I'm sure. Oh, great, it's got lead, so we're gonna get the cancer. Yep, there it is, made in China. Unbelievable. So this is number one, or it's not, it's number four. And the speed is like a good functional low because that's moving some air. That noise is something with the mounting, I think. It sounds like bearings, but it's not because as soon as you cut the motor off, it stops. So it's like a, it's some kind of vibration. That's three and that's four. Not much of any difference. I don't know how that would be corrected. It's definitely sounds like a some kind of a vibrations noise. I guess it could just be coming out of the blades. I don't know. And that, that's rubber, so that should be absorbing most of the vibrations that exist. Okay, well, I guess there is no advantage to using that control, so let's go back to the variable speed control and try it again. Somewhere on this control, there dwells a trim. I think that's the trim in there. And we need to adjust that because the trim is wrong. It's not set correctly for this particular fan. 
Oh, that can go on different ways. No wonder why it was so screwed up. So, the low, there's that buzz. That's from the control. It is worse. But, I mean, at high speed, I think the airflow noise will drown out that buzz anyways. It mostly does. You know what? I don't like either control. That's what the truth is. I don't like either control. This one's noisy. But I think I'll at least get the speeds I want out of this one. We're at 121.8 volts. That's a bit on the high side around here usually. So you'd have to take into account that it wouldn't be able to run this slow necessarily all the time. There's always the possibility it could stall out. This, of course, is totally useless at this speed, but it looks pretty cool. And it does seem to be sustaining okay. Let's see what our power draw is. Point, uh, 0.9 amps, <laughs> 4 watts. It's quite efficient. So it will run that way. Control goes all the way down to there. It's going to end up stalling out. So we need to adjust the trim. Oh, is it going to stall out? Let's see if it stalls out. I like to set it just so that it can barely start up on the low. So there it goes, right there. So let's turn this up here. I'm not sure if this is working or not. That was way too much. I'm not able to turn that with that screwdriver. Okay, stupid control. This thing is really sensitive. I'm hardly turning this knob and it's jumping all over the place. 
it's not drawing any power now. Let's see what that does. That's point. No, what is that? That's three watts. That's where it was before. That's all the way down. Let's see if it'll start up. Yeah, it'll start up at that speed. Nope, it just hit a bad spot in the stator. Well, that's a bit too low. Let's see if I can turn it up just enough to make it where I want it to be. It. All right, that looks like that'll do it. Nope. I would never run it at this speed unattended because it's there's no purpose. It's not doing anything. Um, so if it's really quite on the edge, I'm not worried about it. How many watts is that? That's six. I'm gonna see if I can tone it down just a hair, maybe to five watts. All right, that looks to be about as low as we're going to be able to run it. So I think we'll go with that. So this needs to be kind of like that. I like that low speed. That's a good low speed right there. That's about like four o'clock. That's three watts. So let's see, where do we get like ear movement? I feel the air now, ever so slightly, but I do feel it.
that's 36 watts I want to try and run it just straight into the main to see what the wattage is. It almost seems like it's not quite running at full speed with this this thing. Because that it seemed to be a little bit faster with. Could just be an illusion. Jeez, I don't like either one of these controls. Just don't. <laughs> All right, let's see what that does. It's still making that weird noise. It's got to be something with the mounting, I guess. Thirty-seven, so negligible difference. Whoops. There. It's got to be something with the mounting bracket. The problem is we're going to have the same kind of thing upstairs. So it may make the same noises. I'm trying to see if I can hear where that noise is. I want to say it's radiating from the um, from the ceiling, but I can't prove that. Well, let's see if uh, I can rig up a test here. Oh, I know what I can do. Put this in, or we'll throw it on the floor. Uh, just to get the hole started, I'll use a different screw here. put this in right next to it and let's see if with that other hook does it still sound like that and that will kind of tell me if it's something with the metal on the metal on that box there that to me is what it sounds like it doesn't sound like a, a noise from within the fan it sounds like a noise that's being radiated somewhere else
Whoops. All right, let's see if it still makes this sound. Okay, we had a battery run out. Anyways, let's see if it still makes the sound being mounted on that wood. It's quieter, but it is still there. So the question becomes, what is making that sound? I'm going to go ahead and put this back to the controller here. Because I think it's obvious that this is the way you would have to get set up. What is that? Let's check under this canopy and see if there's anything perhaps that would be vibrating under there. Wouldn't think so, it's just a basic capacitor under there. There's a lot of vibration transferring through. Unfortunately, it may just be noisy. It sounds like something is loose, but it's not.
I guess that's just the sound it makes. You know, when you get into the real low range, it does stop. That's full power. I can't believe how underpowered this is. This was 10 feet off the floor. I didn't think you even feel it. I guess it's not that loud. It's not quiet, but it's not terrible. Now that noise is starting to kick in again. It's like from here to there is where it makes that noise. Oh, I guess it's still doing it here too. But it may not be that big of an issue because the reality is it moves so little air. If I really needed a fan to move the air around, it'd be running on high. And if I didn't need it to be moving air, it'd be running, you know, real down low. Where it's pretty quiet. So... It may be okay. Not really moving in the air at this point. I 
It looks pretty cool running at this speed, but it's not doing anything. Well, hmm. Interesting. That's four watts right there. I think that'll be the low speed. So we'll be running there or there. And this is fine for cooling, but if I wanted to put it on to move heat around, let's see where that puts us. That's probably like the speed I'd want for moving heat around, maybe a little bit less. But unfortunately that's in the noisy range here. What I don't get about that noise is it's not synchronous to the rotation of the fan. I don't know what that is. I could deal with the motor hum, but I couldn't deal with that, that rattling, that intermittent rattle sound. That would infuriate me. But this is right around the speed I'd use it to move heat down from the ceiling because you can just barely feel it. Maybe it's the blades vibrating. I don't know. Not really moving in the air anymore.
And even this is like moderately annoying. It's tolerable, but it's kind of annoying. Just sounds like something's loose somewhere. Well, I don't know what it is. Wonder if that would go away over time. Maybe once the bearing's broken or something. This is high again. I don't know, I got mixed feelings about it. I'm highly under impressed with the air movement it's just a very underwhelming experience but at the same time it's a really cool fan i don't know i may install it for a little while but i don't think it's going to last because it's not practical if it wasn't making all the noises it would be fine but it can't be making all that noise I hate noise. Well, it's disappointing, but I'm glad I learned that now and not once I went through the trouble of getting it upstairs. <laughs>